Hey everybody, this is Rudy Carl Alexander coming to you for Hip Hop College Source, a powerful segment, 15 minutes on what is happening in the world, what is happening in black culture, black music, black cinema. First, and I'm gonna come back to this also, I'm gonna talk about P. Diddy. I've heard a lot of people saying that we should reserve judgment on P. Diddy. In most cases, I would say that is true. But where is the, the claims, the negative input, uh, the people who are screaming, do something about this guy coming from? They're coming from Black people. Uh, he has had at least three lawsuits going on. And now we're here going back years, some of the dirt he's involved with. And just like with Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, when there's that much information out there, I don't believe you could tell me a person that has had a lot of negative input that most of those elements were not true. Because if you ain't out there doing anything, people just don't go out of their way to say stuff about you. Maybe if you're in politics, yes. But if you give people a foundation of which to yap, they're going to yap and they're going to scream, especially if you got intimidating, bullying, threatening tactics involved with it also. Eventually, somebody's going to say, they may be scared at first, and that's why you've gotten away with it for so long, but chickens come home to roost. The old uh, Malcolm X statement. So, P. Diddy, no, I don't have any um, sympathy for him in this context. If he's truly doing some of the things that they said he has done, they need to reach out to him. I want to give a, a, a real credit to some of those who are in that industry who have really maintained their dignity, their integrity. Denzel, Samuel L., uh, Spike Lee even, yes. These people have maintained their dignity. Even though a lot of information has come up about Kevin Hart uh, in relationship to Diddy, I include him with a, a sense of dignity in how he's carried himself and how he tries to carry himself. Yeah, I mean, you can't be out there and not make no mistakes at all, even though Denzel looked like he's perfect. But I believe Diddy is guilty of most of the things that people are saying. And it sheds a different light on a lot of the things that he has done. Hey, this is Hip Hop College Source Weekly. Uh, your, your information for Black culture, Black music, Black cinema. Black what's happening. And I wanted to do this for a while. And again, uh, we want to start at 8 o'clock, but if we don't start at 8 o'clock, the main thing is we do it every Sunday. And that's what I'm going to attribute to. And I'm going to put that on Comedic Vibrations. If you want to find more information about Hip Hop College Source, look at Comedic Vibrations, uh, the Facebook site, and you'll get a chance to see most of the information. Black Cinema. I watched The Book of Clarence. Excellent movie, very funny. Uh, let me give an overview. It started out with a chariot race of Clarence and Elijah in their chariot against uh, Mary Magdalene, I guess, and played by Tiona Terry, Taylor, uh, whatever her name is, I'm sorry. Tayona, I know that's her first name. And she won the race.
because she was helped by uh, people in the crowd and shooting darts at Elijah and uh, Clarence. Um, and Clarence was supposed to try to win the race because he had been loaned the chariot and the horse and all that stuff by Jedediah. Now, all of these people are black, which is a, a statement of itself. And in reality, if you look at where Israel is in the world and look at the times that all of this went on, um, it's pretty sure that those were black people and they are depicted as black in this particular movie. So Clarence uh, went to talk to Jedediah. He said, say, man, I, I lost your money uh, and all of this. He said, well, I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to go and find it. So he was trying to figure out how he could figure out how to get him some money to pay back Jedediah, who was a hard brother of the, of the world. And of that particular world. So he went around, he was smoking weed, he, was, he sells weed and steals wine. And all of this was shown like homeboys in the neighborhood. Um, so you had Elijah, you had Clarence, Jedediah, and Clarence's twin brother was Thomas. And he was a disciple. And they did show the, the disciples and Jesus. And the way that they depicted them, I thought it was very good. They depicted them as serious spiritual brothers uh, that they walked in step with Jesus like, like the brothers walk with Malcolm X. And when he moved, they moved and it was all strong and powerful and I'll get to more of that later, but Clarence was trying to figure out how he was going to get this money. He said, okay, I'm going to become the 13th disciple. So he tried to go get become a disciple. They laughed at him. And so but Judas, who is depicted as a scheming, slimy, backstabber kind of guy that he's depicted as in the Bible, so he lived up to that um, play by Michael Ward. Very good uh, depiction. Clarence went to a, a guy who was a slaveholder. I forgot his name. Um, but the guy who was the slaveholder, he held about 12 slaves. And he said, you can have my slaves if you be my greatest warrior, Barabbas. So Barabbas came up out of the ground. That he was in the trap door on the ground, and Clarence beat him through trickery. He beat him through trickery, and you know they said, "Hey, you know, you follow up with what you said you were gonna do." So uh, the slave master said, "Okay, you take Barabbas." And so Barabbas started hanging out with them. Um, they continued to go along, but now uh, Clarence said, hey, I'm going to become a Messiah. If this Jesus guy can do it, I can do it too. So he started going around the country talking and talking to the people saying he's holy and, and they started earning a lot of money. But Clarence wanted to go talk to the mother of Jesus who was Mary. And he wanted her to admit, hey, it's all a scam, isn't it? It's all a scam. And she would not admit that. But there was some interest in the sides and how they presented it. it. They presented it like, okay, she didn't want to admit it because she didn't want to disappoint Joseph, who was standing over there next on the wall. And he's saying, man, I don't believe it either. And she kept trying to tell the story. And it's like, okay, she wants to tell that story and Joseph, uh, you know, wanting to stay with Mary, he said, okay, I'll accept the story. But they give a whole era of doubt 
in that whole conversation. They give a whole era of doubt and the way they presented it, just like brothers on the street would take that whole concept if it was presented to them without any background. So that was very, very interesting. And so he kept going and he was, you know, for all intents and purposes, doing acts of, but he was doing miracles, but he had his friends standing in to make those miracles manifest. And then the Romans came along, played, of course, whites played the Romans, and they came along and they say, hey, we are instructed to get rid of all these false messiahs. And so they was plotting on Jesus also. They were saying, but as the Bible says, they wanted to get him, but they was afraid of what the people would do. And that kind of interaction was depicted in the movie. They were concerned because they were being threatened by uh, certain townspeople. Now, Barabbas is shown to be one that, hey, he wasn't going to take no stuff. So, uh, Jedediah still wants to get his money from Clarence. So, they go to a party and Clarence is there. Oh, he loves Jedediah's sister, by the way. And so him and Clarence and Jedediah's sister are there. Then she leaves out. He follows after her and her brother's outside. We still don't know if she set him up or that just happened to happen like that. But what Jedediah did was also set up to have the Romans help him enforce it. But what Jedediah didn't know was the Romans was already looking at Clarence because they were instructed to get rid of false messiahs. So they grabbed Clarence. Um, Barabbas uh, fought against them, but he had to run. And he ran away. They speared him several times, but he still got away. So they took Clarence and, and Pontius Pilate playing by James McAvoy said, hey, if you can walk on water, we're going to let you get away. We're going to let you go on by it. And to surprise, Clarence walked on water. And of course, part of his pilot said, well, now you're proving like you're a Messiah. I got to kill you. But he tried to get him to tell on Jesus. He said, if you tell on Jesus, that's what we really want. We're going to let you go. But Clarence wouldn't do it. So last part of the movie is they take him through all the torture and everything and they eventually uh, kill him. And But you do see those scenes of Jesus showing miracles. He also mentions that somebody is going to um, sin against him and give him up and it's shown that it's going to be Judas Iscariot. And one of the great scenes in the movie was where Mary Magdalene, played by Tayona Terry, was being stoned. They were throwing stones. They were hitting her, hurting her. And then Jesus came along. And Jesus put his hand up and stopped the stones in midair. He stopped the stones in midair. And then he talked to the people in the crowd. He said, I know you, what's your name? Jezebel, you're a sinner. Uh, I know you, what's your name? You're a sinner too. If, if Those of you who are without seeing you are welcome to throw the first stone. Of course, they everybody stopped. And then he healed, um, he healed Mary's wounds and told her to go on his, her way. So the gravitas of Jesus is present throughout. And, but the movies are about Clarence and back to Clarence. So they took him to the stake. He carried it and they depicted him being nailed in the hands and being nailed in the feet. And, you know, then a very interesting thing, they had a white beggar who was there in the beginning of the movie, he was looking dirty and ugly and everything else. But Jesus 
toward the end of the movie, gave him coins, repeating coins. And he took those coins and he had the ladies clean him up and he started looking like the traditional description of Jesus. And everybody was falling out over him. But then the Romans saw him and said, okay, that's another guy playing Messiah. So at the end of the movie, he was up there on the stake at the same time as um, Clarence. Now, some people will say, yeah, but Clarence and the Bible doesn't mention that. But we do know that uh, during that time, over 3,000 Jews and different people were put on the stake, a whole lot of people before Jesus, after Jesus. Now, Jesus mentioned in the movie that he would be double-crossed and he would be given up in three days. We are not shown that. But it could have happened three days later. But they showed a depiction of Clarence and Benjamin, who is the white, quote-unquote, savior, getting crucified. Now, three days later, it could have been Jesus and Barabbas, because Barabbas wasn't uh, taken at that time either. Now, the Bible says that Barabbas was healed. He Not healed, excuse me. Barabbas was set free because they wanted Jesus. So uh, I say y'all that to say, I thought it was a very good movie. I think everybody should see that movie and think about it in the real sense of these things happening during the time, how that, how would they come about? How would they be seen in real time? Now we know the story of Jesus um, really manifested after his death that when the Romans took over and they brought about the council of Messiah, that's when the divinity of Jesus was established. Whereas Arius said he wasn't divine, but the Roman uh, bishops wanted to depict him as that. And they had their reasons for political purposes. But I say, I can't possibly say everything in this particular setting at this time, but you go see the movie, The Book of Clarence for yourself and let them present the ideals to you. And the discussion of the Bible and Jesus is an ongoing discussion that will continue forever. But just add different things to your discussion and try to look at it from a realistic standpoint of what must have been going on, you knowing the nature of man. Okay, my last thing, and I don't have as much time, but I want to share that the movie Origin Cast is a great movie, and I see why it won awards by Ava DuVarnay. Um, she should have got nominated for, uh, she did get nominated for Academy Award, I believe. She got nominated for it. Now, I see why it got so much attention, too, because it was showing the system that the Nazis used to subjugate the Jews. It also discussed very deeply the system that is used in India, the caste system that developed the system that made a whole group of people untouchables. And what the movie is saying that they the people in the United States who wanted to have a legal basis for subjugating black people and have it make sense. They use those systems, but even deeper, the Nazis use the American system that they use for subjugating black people to subjugate the Jews. And that movie is very strong on that context. And we are gonna to continue to talk about uh, the principles of origin cast, uh, that movie, and how it is so true. 
And one important thing that she was saying, that it's not just based upon race. Now, it's an easier thing to be able to use race if you have identified marks like black people. But in any case, people will find something to say, you are not as good and we can subjugate you and make sure everybody is better than you. It's something that throughout time people have tried to use. In the case of India, a certain group of people, they labeled as untouchable. Uh, I believe they're called the Dalits. Um, I, I, I do not know the um, pronunciation of the word, but you should see that movie so you can be clear about it. But I, 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 what I'll do is next show, I'll have more information about it. Uh, on, on the website, Kemetic Vibrations, um, the Facebook site, I have that uh, book of origin cast, um, the origin of the caste system by Isabella Wickelson, who the whole movie was about her journey. And that part of it was strong too. Ava DuValney did a great, great, great job. And she deserved all the accolades that she's been presented. Um, that's all that I have. And we will see you next week. If it's Sunday, it is Hip Hop College Source Weekly. I thank you very much. We'll see you next time, uh, next week. And it may not be 8 o'clock. It might be. It might be 9 o'clock. It might be 10 o'clock. It might be 12 o'clock. But if it's Sunday, we're going to talk about it. Thank you. We'll see you next week.